Okay. I, probably the first thing is, you know, it's more clinical. I'm not sure I want clinical, but um, look, he, here's the thing. The, the big thing at the moment is OLEDs and blacks and it's like, okay, all right. And even projectors, you know, it's like I'm buying a JVC because it's got great blacks. That's one end of the equation. And where we get really lost in all of this is, is a greater understanding. Okay, so let's say you've got a, a TV or a projector, it doesn't really matter what it is, and this is its black level here, but here's its white level, right? So you have a dynamic range that's that big. Now let's say you've got a projector that um, has slightly uh, lesser blacks, and uh, that's there, but your whites are up here, you now have a far greater dynamic range that you're dealing with. So look, I love OLED TVs, not a problem. And you know, in the right environment with the right ambient light, they can be great. But let's say you're punching 600 or 800 nits, okay? Um, and yes, you can have perfect blacks. But if you go to um, a TV that's punching say 1200 nits, um, and it's got slightly lesser blacks, um, and perceptually, you know, often in a, in a lit room, you often can't tell the difference anyway, um, then you have a greater dynamic range. So you're actually going to see more detail on that TV. We are getting absorbed literally by this, you know, obsession with black levels. And yes, look, a good black, I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not going to say, you know, you don't want good blacks. Of course you do, but you want good, clear, well-defined and accurate white levels. And the further apart the two are, the better the image is. There's a lot of professional colorists who are using LED TVs because what happens with OLEDs is as they reach the upper limits, and we see this when we're calibrating, when you get to 100% white, the RGB starts to um, uh, separate. They can't produce the colors. They're pushed to their absolute limits. So you get this uh, um, dispersion. Um, and separation in color accuracy at the high end with, with, with OLEDs. With RGB, they can produce a more consistent uh, uh, white balance or red, green, blue at higher levels. So some colorists actually prefer to use LEDs. Um, and uh, that's the reason. So it's not just a question of, of great blacks. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, it, it's all relative. You have to look at literally the bigger picture and understand that dynamic range. Where are my hands? <laughs> that dynamic range that you're dealing with. Great blacks is one, but it's only one part of the equation. <coughs> what if you've got great blacks, but you've got really rubbish red, green, blue, um, say magenta, yellow, right? Well, so so what? You've got great blacks. Um, we've got a video on YouTube uh, called Color Space. Um, I can't remember the exact title of it at the moment. But one of the things that makes a big difference in, in um, different types of projectors are how they produce their red, green and blue. Together they can make a nice strong white, but each color on their own is not that powerful. Um, now, something like, if you look at why the BenQ X12000H, um, or I think the 9060 as it was in the US, um, is because it was an LED and it could produce really good saturation, um, so good hue and um, uh, hue and saturation and luminance uh, of each discrete color. So when you looked at color on a screen, it was much much brighter perceptually uh, and actually than another projector uh, that had the same luminance or same lumen output. So, um, yeah, I mean, would I rather watch an OLED TV or a projector? Give me a projector any day. Give me a well set up, well calibrated projector. And not a lot of people, to be honest, have seen a really, really well calibrated projector. So I hope that kind of demystifies some of that. Projectors are better. End of discussion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just, I was trying to I'm be subtle. But... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding for the TV TV fans out there. TVs are still fine. No, look, for the you know, I'm a big fan of TV, but is, is, you know, and this is an interesting argument, is TV cinema? I don't think so. Not people, yet. people don't no, go to the movie theaters still... to look at a TV. This, this... Yeah, I haven't yet yeah, walked into I've a commercial seen cinema before. and seen a TV there. Yeah. I've uh, tried. <laughs> Same thing I've tried. <laughs> yeah. oh, have you seen that in person? There, no, uh... there, was a, there was an article about it um, in one of our magazines over here, and I think they, what were they using, Andrew? Like a 
uh, it was a whole heap of uh, X amount of size panels put together, and it was yeah. essentially one big 250-inch <laughs> TV. Um, I did. But again, I did see the. Um, I saw the Sony C Cled C Led or whatever it's called. Cle yeah. Cletus. Yeah. I did see that. It was they had it at one of their uh, uh, one of their announcement shows. Whatever they're showing off some new OLED TV, and it was yeah. like it was humongous. And I remember walking to the room. I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "That is." An amazing projector and it's lit up in here and I'm, we're looking for the projector in the back and we're like we're like yo that is that big tv screen and we got up close to it and you kind of you know when you got close to it you can see the little the the lines where they put the the, the panels together but at a distance it was pretty uh it was pretty amazing it was pretty it was literally gigantic television set it didn't it wasn't like a a movie screen but it was just a big gigantic tv like it was crazy how, how it was that, crazy bright how did that feel to you watching something like that did it uh, i mean this this term cinematic gets thrown around a lot but it was more yeah, like going to uh i don't know if you've ever been to like a baseball game that had like the big tv screen there it was yeah. like that just uh sharper yeah i think <laughs> something about that's just for me is a little bit harsh um, if you could dial it back, but uh, I, again, I'm kind of a, still a big fan of this reflected light kind of look. But yeah, I think because uh, the TVs cool are di they're direct light, so it's like a flashlight mm. shining at your face at, rather mm. than bouncing off at you. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's softer. It's a little bit softer, mm. yeah, for sure. But anyone that comes over and subscribes to us, obviously, we'll we'll factor in over the next couple of weeks. Um, who's also subscribed to Shane's, and um, we'll um, give away a, a free room design. Um, which uh, obviously, depending whether it's a new room or an established room, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we can obviously do anything. Um, and uh, that means that those people get to work quite closely with myself and Andrew um, and build that relationship and maximizing your space and your existing equipment, if you've got existing equipment, or looking at starting from scratch. This is like a $2,000 value. And if you do, guys, if you guys do come over from the chat here from this video, Make sure you guys comment on one of their videos. Let them know that you actually did watch this stream. And that will make it easier for them to pick a winner. Absolutely. So who's going to win this, this extravagant prize of room design for your future home theater? And also, since we're talking about uh, subscribing, guys, I also have a Patreon as well. So if you guys want to get up with me, you can contact me any time of the day if I'm awake. For as little as a dollar a month, up to ten dollars a month. Listen, there's all kinds of good, good treats if you sign up for Patreon. I got a bunch of my Patreon guys here in the chat now. But for as little as a dollar a month, listen, you get some exclusive content, discounts on AV equipment. I'm partners with uh, Value Value Electronics. So if you're here in the U.S., you want to buy a new Denon receiver, a Marantz receiver, an NAD, a Bowers and Wilkins, a Trinov. Whatever it is, listen, if you are a Patreon subscriber, then I will save you some money going directly from them. Who knows? Maybe if you sign up, I might be able to save you some money in Australia as well with these guys. So for as little as a dollar a month, sign up for 10 bucks a month. Listen, I'll even video call you on Skype, on FaceTime, whatever. We can talk about your marital problems. Whatever you got, sign up on uh, Patreon. So that's available for you guys. Links are going to be in the video's description down below.